watching her for years. Let's go to Justin, speaking to us from the left coast, San Francisco. Justin, we were just talking about these sanctuary city laws, and we've also gotten into a discussion about a lack of a moral compass. Go ahead. Make a point or two. Uh, you almost lost me there with Nancy Pelosi. Once I heard her voice, I was like, oh, I'm out of here. It's, it's tough that- to take for everyone across the country, I believe, but go ahead quickly. Exactly. So um, I was recently went out to dinner down on the Fisherman's Wharf where I used to feel totally, totally comfortable, totally safe, no issue, no care in the world. Was walking to my car, saw a guy. You just, I hate no, feeling in a sanctuary city like a gorgeous city like San Francisco that I have to watch my back now. I don't you have to. Like it. And I was walking. And she looked and felt the same way. And it's like. Point I wanted no, to this is. This, listen, your line's cracking up a little bit, but the bottom line is you do. You feel less safe. And you look at police funding uh, in every city, that's always an issue. Uh, having more police on the streets, always an issue. And now you look at our military and the defunding there. I mean, we're less safe at home. We're less safe in terms of our standing in the world. And all of this is happening under Obama's watch. We're going to talk more about this. I can't wait to hear from you. This is the Savage Nation. Brian Sussman, proud to be filling in. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O. Brian Sussman, in for Michael Savage. This is one we've got to unpack a little later in the program. I'm at uh, Savage's website, michaelsavage.com. This this is a wild story. Some of you in New York City obviously know who this person is. It's all news to me. Her name is Linda Sarsour. And she's known for her fierce Twitter tirades. And she loves to just unload, especially on American patriots and supporters of Israel. She's an American. American citizen, Muslim activist, ally of Mayor de Blasio. She blasted into the mainstream in August with a, uh, well, we should just probably call it a fawning profile published in the New York Times. They call her Linda Sarsour as a Brooklyn homegirl in a hijab, right? The head coverings, that how you pronounce it, the hijab? 35 years old, mother, mother of three, Palestinian, well, daughter of Palestinian immigrants, arranged marriage at the age of 17, And here's how the White House describes this woman. Are you ready? Here's how Barack Obama's White House describes this woman. Ambitious, outspoken, and independent. Linda shatters stereotypes of Muslim women, also treasuring her religious and ethnic heritage. This is somebody somebody I wouldn't champion. This is somebody I would wish would leave my country. This is a woman who, um, well... When Ted Cruz tweeted out, America is and remains a nation built on Judeo-Christian values, she shot back genocide and slavery. Now, when I think of genocide and slavery, I think of the Muslim world. Perhaps she should fix her attention on what's happening amongst her own people throughout the entire world. But apparently, that isn't how she plays the game. This is a woman who supports violence and supports terrorists. And, get ready for this, according to the article, she receives taxpayer money. She's got an organization she runs that's received city funds. It's New York City. They've told $164,000 since 2012. She's also considered running for the Brooklyn City Council. You see, this is where we're going, folks. I guess she would be considered a moderate Muslim, though. You know who came out today saying there's no difference between moderates and radicals? Putin. Putin actually said that. We'll talk about it. Can't wait. Brian Sussman filling in for Michael Savage on this, The Savage Nation. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. 
Brian Sussman filling in for Michael Savage. Tuesday's the day, by the way. Tuesday's the day Government Zero comes out. No borders, no language, no culture. Government Zero. No borders, no language, no culture. Government Zero. No, no, no. No borders, no language, no culture. Savage is sounding the alarm in this book, how the progressives and their cohorts in crime, their cohorts in the destruction of America, the radical Islamists, are each unwittingly working towards similar ends to destroy Western civilization and remake it in their own respective. This is Government Zero. It's coming out. Order it online. Go to michaelsavage.com. michaelsavage.com. Uh, we were talking, and by the way, we've got a lot to come. Michael's going to be with us next hour, so to speak. There is, this is actually a story that's at World Net Daily, entitled, We've Lost the Battle. But it has to do with a transcript of Michael on this program talking about this this war over the future of Western civilization is being lost. It's being lost because millions of immigrants from the Middle East who largely oppose Judeo-Christian values and have no intention of assimilating are flooding the United States and Britain and France and Germany and other nations. So you're going to hear Savage talk about this in the next hour. But this is that mass, chaotic, systematic, institutionalized immigration that's taking place before our eyes. This is, folks, the fundamental transformation of America. No one took him seriously when he said that, did they? Well, certainly some of us did. But even then, I don't think I had any idea what was about to occur. See, this is a guy who is trying to get even. Get even. He was raised in a cauldron of American hatred, in my opinion. His mother's the lefty world traveler. His father didn't give a rip about the United States of America, simply came here for an education, then went back to Africa. He was raised in this cauldron. Then he moved to Indonesia, where, of course, there was this anti-colonialist mentality. Then he comes back to uh, Hawaii, and he becomes a doper and a coker and a midnight toker. And after that, he goes to Occidental, and he has all of these friends with interesting last names from the Middle East. And he journeys to Pakistan. You know, other kids in college on their spring bake or summer vacation, they're going to fun places, right? He goes to Pakistan. And to this day, it's very curious how he got there. No one really knows. I don't know if a travel ban was in place, but how do you get there? Did you have an American pass? Well, we don't want to get in the weeds on that. But I think the bigger question is, why would you go there? In 1981, that was a hotbed of hatred and Islamist activity. Why would you go there? So what he's doing right now is fundamentally transforming America before our very eyes. Uh, someone showed me pictures. And again, I'm speaking to you from the left coast of the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, a listener to my show on KSFO in the morning and to Michael Savage's show in the afternoon, uh, she showed me some photographs of this, this compound in a little town called Freedom, California. It's, it's near Santa Cruz, which is about 85 miles south of San Francisco. She was showing me this photogra these photographs, and uh, I, I knew you know her husband's involved in real estate. I'm thinking, what, are you guys planning on buying one of these beautiful apartment comp it was this beautiful i'm serious it was this beautiful complex of buildings that were i guess they were probably about eight unit buildings and there are a bunch of them scattered all about this beautiful property i thought well you guys getting ready to buy one of these buildings what's the deal well long story short these were photographs uh, you couldn't even find so much as a leaf on the ground it was perfectly manicured and all the buildings were brand new and just right Playgrounds, luscious grass. We have a drought here in California. It looked like the grass was green. They were even watering the grass here, there. No one waters the grass anymore out here. That grass actually looked green. But I said, what is this? They said, this is a refugee camp. This is where they're coming. This is where they're being housed. And I'm thinking, this is, this is better housing than most people in America have. This is the fundamental transfer. This is getting even. This is changing the American ethos. 
There's no, not, not even a, a scintilla of a wish for these people to assimilate. Do your own thing. Grind down the American ethos. Bring in your own culture. Bring in your own language. Bring in your... This is what's happening. That's why this book by Savage is, I believe, going to be his biggest hit and certainly his most important book yet. I've heard him talk on the radio. He said, this is, this is my last shot. Let's go to Lorraine, WJR. Lorraine, you're on the Savage Nation. Brian Sussman filling in. Go ahead, please. Yes, hi, Brian. Um, I think that the world leaders are in cahoots with each other to make the whole world borderless. I had read that years ago, that there was a secret thing going on about um, doing away with borders. Well, I will tell you, Lorraine, Savage is going to be on in a, in a recorded piece a little bit later. What you're going to hear him say is, and I'm going to, I'm going to read it. He's going to, well, I'll paraphrase it. He says that German Chancellor Angela Merkel, to your, to your point, is doing to Germany what Obama is doing, uh, what the, what the prime minister is doing in England, what the socialist is doing to France, what Obama is doing to America. They're trying to, George Soros, the open border society. This is what they're trying to do. And why? So this elite crew of incredibly wealthy, mostly atheistic socialists can take over. Oh, that sounds too gargantuan. No one would be that evil. Look at people throughout time. There have always been people like this. Evil dictators who crave power and want to crush the masses. Look what's, look what's happening in North Korea. For that matter, look how clever they've been, and clever and the diabolically clever, I should say, they've been doing it in Cuba all these years. Look around the world. This is happening before our very eyes. The president of Sudan that the little clock boy had that selfie with. I mean, he's a dictator. He's wanted by the international uh, uh, court for terrorism. And for he was housing bin Laden, for gosh sakes. Little clock boy meets with him. He's a ruthless SOB. Now we go to Mike WSBA in Pennsylvania. You know, isn't it interesting, Mike? The only guy standing up to the Muslims right now is is the Russian President Putin, who said today there is no difference between a moderate Islamist and a radical Islamist. Your comments, please. Sure, Brian. Um, he's absolutely correct. And as a matter of fact, he's mentioned the fact that um, it, uh, if, if, if the Muslims want to come to Russia, they better speak Russia, eat Russian, and, and down the whole list, we're not going to change our culture for their culture. But I can prove what he said is correct. All you have to do is rewind back to 2001 uh, and, and put the camera on Jersey City to the so-called moderates cheering as the, as the buildings went down. How's that? Yep, yep, yep. Well, and as and I thank you for your call here on the Savage Nation. I learned something listening to this program uh, just the other day, and I'm guessing that Savage talks about it in the book. But I was so curious. He he mentioned this in passing, and so I did a little research on it. And this goes to the point of these past callers. And by the way, as you know, um, the lines are open here on the Savage Nation. 855-400-SAVAGE. But the term is, are you ready for this? The term is, let me find it, because this is very important, and it's what's happening in the United States of America today. It's what happens when a Muslim immigrates to another land. When they immigrate to another land, Hij Hijra, I believe is how you pronounce it, H-I-J-R-A-H, Hijra. It's a special blessing in the Quran for those who immigrate to foreign lands and raise their families amongst the infidel. Hijra apparently means living in the land of disbelief. So you go, and as a sacrifice to Allah, you, land, you live in this area where they don't believe. And it's not so much that you're supposed to proselytize those around you. It's, from everything I've been able to read, it's that you're supposed to overpopulate them that's how you do it in fact i'm reminded of yasser arafat remember yasser arafat he was the guy that ran the plo uh, the palestinian liberation organization the guy who currently runs the palestinian territories mahmoud abbas whose uh, name used to be abu uh, abu maz uh well, whatever mahmoud abbas abu mazen was his name previously mazen was the 
financier for the PLO. Nobody knows that. Now he has a Hugo Boss suit and he looks really sharp. He was the financier for the PLO. Yasser Arafat said this, we will defeat you with our wombs. 